Okay, today we're going to talk about my favorite silversmith. He was George Schiebler. He was in business from 1876 to 1907. He was the rebel of the silver industry. He made shapes and pieces that were outrageous. They were unusual. They were startling. And um, today, his things are very sought after. In its day, they were thought to be just a little too advanced for the Victorian home. I've talked to um, quite a few people over the years who admired Schiebler. I've talked to two people uh, who over the last several years have said they're writing a book about Schiebler. Whether these books ever come out, I don't know. I've actually reviewed part of one. It, it, it's got some very good information in it. But here this wonderful American silversmith, and here it is 2010, you know, 100 years after uh, the demise of this company, and there's still no book on Schiebler. It, it's, um, you know, I think in coming years, when the, the book is written by somebody, Schiebler will be recognized and even more sought after than he is today. Okay. Uh, probably Schiebler's greatest accomplishment uh, was his um, Etruscan pattern. And uh, this, this is the pattern. It's, it's a medallion pattern. And medallion was, and I was really one of the first American ideas. In the 1850s and 1860s, silversmiths would take the heads of Romans or other ancient warriors and put it on the top of a pattern and um, you know sell silverware. All the major companies did it. It was, you know, it was a it was a big thing. It was something new and different. It was popular. By the late 1870s, it was yesterday's news. Medallion was not popular anymore. There were, you know, new exciting things, uh, you know, that were taking its place. And Schiebler decided, I'm going to come out with a medallion pattern. It was thought to be crazy. You know, why would someone want to do something that's been done? But anyway, he had a whole new slant on. He wanted his silver to look like it had been used in ancient Pompeii after the uh, volcano erupted in the year 79 BC. And so the pieces have, have cracks, imperfection, fake cracks, bends, uh, irregularities, all us. Uh, I think it's 17 different unique medallions. He also put gold on many of the medallions. Uh, a completely new idea. This piece is very special, I think. Just found this at a little country show down in Texas. But it has, let's see, 12 different medallions on this knife. Most pieces have one or two. Anyway, this crazy idea that he had of bringing back medallion was an instant success and um, it was very sought after in the late 1870s and today it's recognized as probably the most well done uh, medallion pattern. But I'll show you a few of the other things they did. Now, most of the things that Schiebler did, he created by himself. He had workers, but most of the ideas and the designs uh, were actually his. This is very much different than like the other major silver companies. Uh, you know, they had designers. Schiebler was his designer. So here's, here's a fork. I don't even think you, you could use this fork. Uh, every bit of it is pierced. It's kind of flimsy, actually. 
but it's a work of art. Every square inch is all designed. There's, you know, what would you use a fork like this for? I've been in the business for a very long time. I have no clue what you use this, this fork for. It is simply a work of art. Here is another piece of the Schiebler medallion. And this is one of the pieces with the gold um, medallion. On the back, indeed, it does say plus 14 carat. Here is an ice cream server. It's all acid etched, about the toughest thing you can do with silver. Dip it in wax, uh, put in acid, and then let the acid eat through the wax. Beautiful flowers, nice weight. Again, unique design. No one else made a um, ice cream server that looked anything like this. And it actually fits very nicely into the hand. Here is a fork with a, a big knight, knight on it. Again, no one made a fork with two tines like that. Again, I would imagine it's a salad set, has a sort of a matching spoon, but again, just unique shape of the bowl, unique shape of the tines. It was absolutely shiva. Here's a, a letter opener, beautifully done. So much piercing, you can just look through the handle. Uh, it's, it's a work of art. Here is a child's plate that was done about a nursery rhyme. And again, it has gold lions, it has a wolf, it has a copper snake that's sneaking through the grass. You know, very, very excellent work. Very unusual. He was the rebel. Un unfortunately, um, you know, his company did not survive long. As I said, by 1907, he was bankrupt. And what did he do for the rest of his life? He went to the Gorham Company and um, did nothing special for them. He was just a silver worker at the company and um, died soon after. But as I said, someday, the whole, when the whole story about Cheatler is told, he will be recognized as the greatest American salesman. Thank you.